She's always the one to put a smile on your face. Uh, you know, just, she was always happy. You never seen her down. She was always smiling, giggly, just, just all, all around happy person. Sherry would not just up and leave and not tell anybody, no friends, no family, nothing. And the fact that she had three small children at home, it just, it, it was just something that she wouldn't have done. My dad was in contact with the police department on a regular basis. It was always, they had no answers. They haven't, you know, seen or heard of her, nothing. I feel like he kind of like lost hope as far as getting any help from law enforcement. We were going to do everything with our power to recover that body for the family to pay the last respects that they need. We also contacted uh, Dr. Dennis Dirkmat from the Mercyhurst University for his forensic anthropology team to essentially excavate the site and find these remains. We're out in the woods, and there is a rock fence there and a hunting cabin. We've dug a series of holes every every two feet. So there there is about five people with shovels. I used a ceramic towel probe in each of the holes. One of the state troopers, he's sort of in the lead there. He, he got down on his hands and knees and was looking in the hole. And when I looked down at it, I said, that's a human tibia and a human fibula from the leg. As we excavated, we could see that the arms and legs and other parts of the body were unnaturally positioned in the grave. Some of the, the bones of the neck that should be right with the skull were sitting in the pelvis. That indicates that the body was placed in the grave in advanced state of decomposition. He sort of stuffed her into this grave. We got all of the bones and brought them back to the laboratory to see if there's any evidence of trauma, any broken bones, any knife cut marks. We didn't see trauma on the rest of the skeleton, but we saw it in the skull, very significant damage to the skull. It was blunt force. Even though we're, as forensic anthropologists, usually not in the business of saying how somebody died, the fact that the trauma was so extensive that would have led to her death. <laughs> 